Okay, we're going to get uh, we're going to get started very quickly. Good afternoon, good evening, uh, and good afternoon. Not in that order. Uh, to everybody dialing in uh, now, um, if uh, if uh, if we could all take our virtual seats for the last Hit Lab Symposium of the year. Uh, very excited to end this one on, on a real high. Uh, we're talking around digital health and human rights. Um, Stan Kishnowski, uh, chair of Hit Lab, will be along in a moment. Um, he is just. Uh, Finishing up uh, a, a call uh, with uh, with one of our uh, HitLab customers, and he will be on to moderate the rest of the uh, symposium. But I don't want to uh, delay uh, any longer. Uh, I'd like to just move on uh, to just let everybody know that the HitLab Summit uh, is coming up next month on November 29th to December 1st, um, where uh, we're going to have the first day in person at Columbia University. So uh, please do check out the link in the chat. And for today only until Friday midnight, uh, you can save 25% on a ticket. Um, and um, uh, you can use the code hit October 25 to save 25%. Uh, so please do um, uh, check that out. Uh, it will be wonderful to see as many of you there for one of the biggest digital health events uh, coming back live to New York City. Uh, also, uh, we'd like to uh, thank our uh, sponsors for this symposium, uh, MST, Cancer Centre and MUNA, all three different actual companies who will be presenting today. Um, and also thank you to our wonderful partners, uh, including the Atcha, um, who without, uh, we would not be able to have these wonderful conversations. Uh, we will also have a, a continued discussion and breakout rooms after the symposium at two o'clock Eastern. Uh, so if you have time to meet some of the speakers and some of the attendees uh, to continue conversations and network, please do uh, join that after the symposium. The link will be in the chat. Uh, and we also have an exclusive giveaway. Uh, it wouldn't be a symposium without a book giveaway, this time from Professor Rita McGrath of the Columbia Business School, uh, who is um, uh, kindly donating five books uh, in total, three for the Instagram winners, and two for the symposium uh, trivia uh, question winners that will be uh, dotted throughout this symposium. And uh, when you do see the questions come up on the screen, the first attendee with the correct answer in the chat box will win a copy of Rita McGrath's The uh, Entrepreneurial Mindset. Uh, but without further ado, uh, I would like to welcome on uh, our first panel, uh, chaired by uh, Sarah Harris from uh, Organon. And she's going to be talking with three wonderful um, Femtech founders uh, from the Middle East and North Africa region. Uh, Sarah, are you there? Can you hear me? I am here. Can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, well, welcome to the uh, welcome to the symposium. Uh, I won't delay you any longer. I'd love you to introduce your panel and uh, get us started uh, with this wonderful conversation. Thank you, Jerry. Thanks. So my name is Sarah Harris, and I'm the Policy and Government Affairs Lead at Organon from Manat across Manat. And Organon is a women's health company that is focused on creating a better and healthier every day for every woman. I'm really excited to be moderating this discussion today about entrepreneurship in women's health across the MENA region, so Middle East and North Africa. And I'm particularly proud to be joined by these three um, female founders who are also the winners of the Femtech Accelerator program that Organon ran in collaboration with Flat Six Labs that recently wrapped up about a month ago. So I think we'll start by giving the floor to these phenomenal women to introduce yourselves and the ventures that you represent. And perhaps we'll start with Yasmeen. I don't know if we've lost Sandra. I can't see you on the screen there. And then we can uh, pass it on to Doreen and Sandra. Sure, thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you, Jerry. And uh, thank you for this, uh, for, for having me and for, it's, it's, a, it's really, a, a pleasure being here amongst uh, professionals and experts in the field. And it's good to see uh, Sarah, uh, Doreen, and uh, Sandra uh, virtually. <laughs> uh, my name is Yasmin Al Muallim. I'm the founder of Maternally. It's an online platform that caters to women's mental health needs during their motherhood journey. Uh, it offers um, healthcare providers, access to healthcare providers, uh, resources that would be evidence based and up to date and um, uh, a community for social support. I'm also an uh, international board certified lactation consultant, a breastfeeding counselor, and a mental health first aider. 
Should I go next? Go. Oh. So, hi, everyone. I'm Doreen Tutikian. I am a human centered designer from Beirut, Lebanon, and I'm the founder and CEO of Oh My Gyno. We are primarily focusing on markets that are really conservative, where we see a lot of issues regarding taboo, female sexuality, and discrimination, particularly also with women that are having challenges accessing sexual health and reproductive health. Um, uh, services. And how we actually tackle this subject is by creating a social media platform where we're creating an empowered group of women and gender diverse people to have access to services that are created by us in partnership with doctors uh, and different medical institutions, as well as uh, diagnostics labs. And we do this by at-home gynecology testing, self-sampling, and telehealth with doctors that are recommended by the community and vetted by us. Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me well? Yes. All right. Uh, so a pleasure to be with you. Uh, my name is Sandra Salami. Uh, I'm also Lebanese. Uh, I'm a mom for three kids, a computer engineer. I've worked in IT for the past 20 years. And uh, I'm currently the founder and CEO of Sira. Um, in Arabic, Sira means uh, life journey. So it's an online mental health platform uh, that aims to normalize and democratize mental health uh, by giving access to mostly women, um, uh, a lot of uh, preventive educational services uh, so that we can discuss uh, parenting struggles, couple struggles, individual struggles and work struggles. We also leverage the power of the collective. Uh, so we do a lot of uh, group sessions, group roundtables, support groups, um, so that uh, women can learn not only from mental health experts, but also from each other uh, who, are, who share the same life struggles. Thank you. Such incredible areas of focus that you're all um, playing in. And I know we've got a short panel, so let's just dive right into the discussion. I think I'd really love to hear more about what you see some of the barriers are to addressing the unmet health needs of women in the MENA region. And for entrepreneurs like yourselves who are innovating in this space and coming up with new solutions, do these barriers also present opportunities for you? Um, maybe Doreen, we can start with you hearing about Oh My Gyno. Thank you, Sarah. Of course, there are a lot of barriers, and I'm sure my colleagues here will tell us more about them. I mean, being a woman in the Middle East has its own challenges, and of course, being an entrepreneur and a woman globally has its challenges, and we have a nice mix of both and a few extra things on top. Um, so maybe I can start up by saying that traditionally, when we think about reproductive health rights for women, we're mostly thinking about the work that uh, international NGOs or UN agencies have done in collaboration with nonprofits. And this in itself has been quite a good awareness campaign for a very long time, but hasn't necessarily provided the services that we need to access the healthcare services that we actually need in order to get tested, in order to be able to have control over our health. So that was the chance for us to be able to get into the world of femtech. And uh, it is an exciting time for us because this is the first time that we see companies that are locally made by women that are from the region that are taking into account the challenges that we understand and with our own language and our own means being able to create solutions for them. This is a first, it's really never happened before. And we are also working with international NGOs and UN agencies that realize how much more effective it is to design solutions that are from the community and by the community. However, we still have the bigger problem, which is investment and funding and actually moving forward. So even though everybody thinks we do a really great project, you will find immediately that we are confronted with a lot of barriers, uh, barriers that are about a woman starting a company in the Middle East, the cultural barriers, and most importantly, especially in the world of femtech and all of these technologies that are relatively new, the majority of investors who are, let's say, part of the Western world, who have the finances and the interest to go into the region, still find it very scary because this is completely new. So you on your own take on the load of explaining so many things and so many reasons. Like I've had questions from investors asking me, oh, do they really use internet over there? And do women actually have a, a sex life over there? Don't they get punished? There's just so many misconceptions that we have to deal with. However, I definitely see that this is the opportunity because 
especially seeing what's happening on social media and seeing so many younger generations of women and gender diverse people speaking up for the ways that their reproductive rights and other rights are not being taken care of. This is, I think, um, feeding us a lot and giving us the motivation in order to move forward. And we are the first movers in the region. So I believe that there will be a lot of opportunities, but it will be a hard climb. Thanks, Doreen. I feel like this point on barriers alone can be an entire panel session and discussion because there's obviously layers to it, right? You've touched on access to capital, you've touched on the culture elements and the general acceptance, as well as just the awareness of what the issues are specific to the region. Thank you, there's such incredible points. Um, and I'm just conscious, I'm looking at the time going, we've got a lot to discuss, but I might also just flip to say, you know, you've spoken about the challenges and some of the opportunities, Reflecting on, I guess, the experience going through the Femtech Accelerator program, do you feel um, that this platform or platforms like this equip founders and, and startups like yourselves in having the right tools to navigate some of these challenges? How is that beneficial from your perspective? Maybe I might hand it over to Sandra if you want to talk about Sierra's experience. Yes, uh, so yes, definitely, uh, Sarah, we've been, uh, I mean, uh, as Sira, we've been uh, lucky to be part of several accelerators, and uh, it has uh, definitely pushed us forward, uh, propelled us into, uh, you know, building our business plan faster, testing the market, knowing the pointers. And what was interesting are also accelerators who focus on impact, uh, because you cannot be in the femtech uh, industry without thinking about impact and, uh, uh, you know, creating change, transforming your audience. So it has been a, a great journey uh, with the accelerators that I've been taking part of. And I would like to salute uh, also companies, uh, enterprises like Organ on, uh, who, who really push for, for these programs and who fund these programs. Uh, it was the first femtech that they were in the region. The first femtech program was funded by Organon. And uh, we wouldn't have, as Sira, we wouldn't have, um, uh, you know, been uh, uh, shining or, or known uh, from, uh, from the market if we didn't participate in such a program that is geared for our needs, uh, where the speakers are... Uh, uh, very well picked and they can answer fem they, they have experience in the femtech industry so definitely it's a it's a great start we would like to see more initiatives like that uh, we would like to see also vcs and fund uh, and funds that are geared for femtech uh, we would like to see the participation more and more of businesses uh, in impact driven companies and in femtech in particular uh, there's a huge need a huge gap in the market uh, um, we, we come from the Middle East region and we can only talk about our region. Uh, and from our region, we, we tell our audience today that uh, the women of the Middle East need uh, more prevention, they need more education, they need more services, they need a better quality of life, they need more empowerment. So each one has a role to play. Thank you, Sandra. And I'm glad you're making the call to action. You're not only highlighting you know, what the opportunity is and, and where we need to play more. This, you know, we've touched on the barriers, we've touched on where that opportunity is, but also there is a need for more involvement. Thank you for making that point. And I think you've all been through such incredible journeys. You know, I'd be interested, you know, reflecting on your experience as a whole, founding your, your companies and moving them forward. Uh, is there, you know, a key lesson or an insight that you learned along the way that, you know, you wish you knew at the start and that perhaps, any entrepreneurs that are just starting out on their journey might benefit from knowing. Perhaps, Yasmin, you could tell us, you know, from your, you've done a lot with Benternally, right? So is there something you wanted to, to share on that? Yes, so so um, first of all, I would like to say, as uh, uh, Sandra mentioned um, and uh, Doreen about uh, raising awareness and uh, about the importance of, of educating uh, uh, the female uh, uh, community, in the in the region, but also uh, as per uh, Sandra, she she mentioned um, the the impact aspect. So so uh, generally, uh, femtech female uh, entrepreneurs focus on the impact on on social impact on on anything that really has a positive strong impact that will benefit that will uh, change something that will have a move a positive uh, a move uh, uh, globally or or starting the region. So maybe. 
um, my my advice is probably to to um, uh, try your best to to keep working because you might feel uh, um, uh, discouraged sometimes. You might feel that door, not all the doors are open for you, but uh, but uh, remember, focus on your uh, on your uh, cause. Focus on on what and who are you doing this for? Um, because uh, it matters, and it will remind you to always um, keep going and and really looking forward to to waking up the next day and working on uh, on this mission. Amazing, Doreen, Sandra, do you have a, a key sort of lesson or something you'd like to share? Doreen, yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. One key thing that I didn't really know in the beginning, because I come mostly from the nonprofit world. So I thought, you know, we're doing something great for women. It saves lives from cervical cancer. I have all the data. This should be some like easy, just invest in me. But it's really not like that. Because when you're a young entrepreneur, it's all about where you are, your geography, your market. And really, you should be smarter about who you speak to. Because sometimes you find yourself speaking to investors who don't really care about these things and they just want, I don't know, the next fintech thing. And sometimes you get discouraged and question yourself. So it's very important to basically put like this, this little box around, you know, where are the, the key places that you need to go to? Who are the people that you need to speak to? Who will really care and help you? And I think that's how you can move forward eventually. Excellent. Thank you. Sandra? Yeah, I have just uh, maybe one lesson. Uh, I, I come from corporate, so I'm not like Doreen. Uh, and I always thought, you know, impact is not for us. It's for NGOs. Uh, I'm. What can I do as a person? Uh, I live in a country that has a lot of uh, problems uh, at different levels. And I always thought, you know, I can't do anything. I'm powerless. Uh, and then through CIRA, I, I realized that uh, the impact you, you should all, all start, everybody can, can, can do impact, everybody can transform, you start with yourself, and if you just change the life of one person every day, uh, it matters, and it grows, and there's a ripple effect, and then without knowing, you're building a company, you're changing mental health, you're going into discussions, you're meeting a, a huge, uh, you know, pharma companies that are also there to, to change the world. You are meeting colleagues and, and, and other, uh, uh, you know, other like-minded people, you're transforming uh, healthcare. So, so it can grow big. It, it, it doesn't need uh, uh, a big dream at first. It just needs a decision. Uh, just just uh, decide to do something and transform the world. Excellent. So stay focused, know your audience and who you want to target and believe that you can have an impact even though you're starting with small and with yourself. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure having this discussion. I know we've reached time. Thank you for HitLab for having Thank us. You. And I'm sure everyone can be reached in the chat. Thanks. That's fantastic, Sarah. And thank you for moderating such a wonderful panel.